Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth Morning Show. I'm your host, Allison Anchor Star, and today we'll be talking first compliance for topic from our annual compliance calendar, and that is everything you need to know about beneficiaries for your financial accounts. Before we begin, as a reminder, this is a financial education presentation and should not be construed as personal financial advice. Full disclaimer information is available at anchorstarwealth.com. Good morning, Steve. Please tell us everything we need to know to make sure our beneficiaries are exactly how we want them on our accounts. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome, Allison. It's June. Can you believe five of 12 months are behind us already and into the heart of summer? And it's nice and hot here in uh, Central Texas. The, the the This topic is uh, the first of our client calendar, just like Allison said, where uh, it's going to be beneficiary review. You're going to see these every two weeks where we kind of break from the daily market update of, you know, why is the market up, why is the market down, what's going on into an educational topic. Uh, it's more boring for sure. I get that. Uh, but it's also things you need to think about. And, you know, we have this laid out. So you think about things once a year, right? Uh, just so you make sure you have these right on your on your uh, accounts, and then we don't need to talk about them really for the, uh, the the rest of the year, right? So right to Investopedia, uh, which is what you're seeing here. What is a beneficiary, how they work, types, and examples. Okay, so first of all, these we're talking brokerage accounts, but we're also talking bank accounts and life insurance policies. So <laughs> it's the person who's going to receive this property should you pass away. Uh, and the important, if you go down to key takeaways here, you know, it's an individual, it can be uh, an entity, you can have a trust as a beneficiary. Um, there can be tax consequences involved. So you need to think about what you're doing to your heirs, if you will. Uh, life insurance, there's no taxes, but uh, certainly uh, Roth IRA, there's no tax consequences, but tr both traditional uh, traditional IRAs would have a tax consequence associated with that. Um, and then they're going to have options, which isn't your problem because you're passing away. But just uh, if you if you don't have your children or potential beneficiaries involved in the financial process at all, might want to bring them in a little bit so at least they know what to do uh, should something happen to you. Uh, you can change these at any point in time. So why bring this up? Some Sometimes people get remarried. Uh, sometimes, you know, you might disinherit somebody in the family where you don't want them any you know, longer on your beneficiaries. But if you don't look at these things, uh, you can have that kind of nightmare scenario where you pass away out of the clear blue and then the money goes to somebody that you absolutely did not uh, want the money to go to. Or you accidentally say you get remarried and everything is going to your ex and you pass away. Well, everything is going to your ex at that point. So you unintentionally disinherited your brand new spouse. You know, So that, that's why you want to look at these things <clears throat> on occasion. They don't change a lot, but they do change uh, sometimes. There's a video there if you want to take a look. It's about a minute and a half long. But really, I just want to talk to you um, about what actually happens in the real world. So if you if you pass away <clears throat> from a financial institution perspective, uh, we open up that account and we see who the beneficiaries are. Uh, before that money goes to the beneficiary, I need to, I or your financial institution, if you're working with somebody else, need to collect from you the death certificate and potentially the executor information and the court appointment of the executor. So just a couple of documents ahead of time before, uh, once I have that, then uh, we can work with the financial institution. Most of us are with Schwab now uh, to where I can retitle that account into the beneficiary's name. And then that's their money. Boom, boom. We're done with the uh, with the work at that point, the account number gets retitled, excuse me, they get a new account number, it gets retitled, the old account basically gets closed and stays around for tax purposes, because of course, the estate's going to have a tax uh, form associated with it uh, before it goes away. So that's how the actual beneficiary process works. Obviously, if there's not, if there's some contention there or all the paper or there's no beneficiary on the account or something like that then it can hang up to where that account is frozen and it could be frozen for a year or two while everything gets sorted out so you really want to make sure you have these uh, beneficiaries straight okay <clears throat> Uh, if you don't have a beneficiary, you are going to, it's going to become part of your estate. Uh, if you don't have a will, uh, it's going to, you're going to be considered intestate, which is intestate, excuse me, uh, if that's pronounced correctly there in the middle of the screen where it says warning, uh, then you go to the laws of the state that you live in. 
and the court's going to decide how everything uh, comes out. So if you don't have a will, get one. Um, you can do it cheaply online. You kind of, you know, it's a do-it-yourself um, sort of thing. You can do it that way or use a lawyer. It's going to cost you a little bit, but at least at that point, you know uh, how that your assets are going to uh, be distributed in accordance with your desires. <clears throat> okay. Uh, why it's important, control where your money goes, of course, uh, help settle the estate. Uh, so, Think of this. So you pass away your stuff and all your accounts go into uh, probate and accounts that have beneficiaries move out of probate and to the actual individuals uh, in a fairly short, short term manner, like a week or two. Uh, the money is retitled and useful. So if you don't have that set up, you could be like we talked about the other day uh, to where you might have beneficiaries that don't have a lot of money. And they're trying to, you know, deal with not only your loss, but there's going to be, you know, potentially any financial impact of that or having to travel. Uh, and folks that don't have a lot of money could really use the inheritance up front to help pay for this stuff, right? To get them there instead of, you know, <laughs> doing whatever they have to do to get there, knowing that the money's coming, but the money might not show up for a year or so. So you kind of want to have these things uh, straight, straight away. So how can you set up your beneficiaries? So think of a traditional family, if you will, uh, where there's two adults and then you have some kids. So generally the adults have the other person as the primary, like an IRA. Um, like on my account, I'll have Irene as the uh, beneficiary on my IRA. So if something happens to me, the assets move to her. She can either put it right in her account or take it uh, as an inherited IRA, meaning she has access to those funds right away because she's not old enough to take a distribution. So uh, that's your primary is generally your spouse. Your contingent beneficiaries are just think of the car accident scenario. Couples tend to ride around in cars together. Well, you know, wor worst day in the world, something happens to both of them. Well, then if you don't have contingent beneficiaries set up, then that money goes into probate. Okay. Potentially a problem. Otherwise, if you have contingency set up, like personally, I have two kids, so it's 50-50 uh, between the two, and then the money would flow down to the uh, the kids fairly straightforward. Uh, obviously, that's, a, that's an easy, easy problem, if you will. If you are potentially have kids with your ex and are remarried, then you might have half of your funds going to uh, your current spouse and half going to not your ex, but your kids. And if you have two kids with uh, former, so you can see how the things can can, can kind of need somebody to talk you through it uh, exactly on what you want to do uh, with the funds. You can generation skip. That's no big deal. Uh, so some people have things set up to where everything at that point goes to the kids, but you don't want to like accidentally disinherit your spouse by not leaving that person any money. So it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, so uh, go through it on your own. If you need to reach out and talk to us about it, we're happy to uh, set, set you up. But again, on the form, you have primary and then you have contingency uh, beneficiaries. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we do this for you with a form. You can do it online. Uh, we have, if we don't have it, we'll have uh, screenshots for you to be able to just kind of follow online. Obviously, if you don't involve us, you can do it directly yourself and the changes take effect immediately. If we do a form for you, we have to send you the form. You have to sign it, it has to come back, it has to get processed. So again, you have to check back like a week later to see if uh, the changes were made, but I can't physically do it for you. I don't have the authority to change your beneficiaries because that's too important uh, for somebody else to have control of, right? So you have to do it either personally or uh, we have to fill a form for you to sign. Um, for retirement accounts, generally the law specifies it's going to be your spouse uh, and it should be, you know, and when logically if your spouse is generally older than your children, I know, chuckle, chuckle, there could be some cases where that's not the case, but generally you want to take care of you and your spouse first, keep retirement money tracking towards retirement versus passing it down to folks that aren't near retirement age yet. Um, eligible uh, beneficiaries, again, there's some different rules that can get into here a little, you can specify anybody. Uh, there's different rules that apply when the money actually passes through. So uh, if you have a what I would call a non-standard situation, or if you have questions, uh, go ahead and reach out. Okay, life insurance is the last thing we'll talk about is, and I'm, again, I'm not an insurance specialist, but uh, generally when you get a life insurance policy, you designate the beneficiary right away. 
that can be revocable or irrevocable. Irrevocable, obviously, once you do it, you're done. Uh, choose well, right? Um, you can go back in the case of like divorce or you, you can go back to the insurance company and renegotiate that. I don't know that exact process, but it can be done. Don't just give up. But uh, if it's revocable, that means you can basically log in and change anytime you want. So uh, consider that. And I think that is it for today. Again, check out uh, Beneficiary Investopedia if you want uh, more information or want to read through that at a little slower pace than we were going. But the bottom line, it's the only time we're going to talk about it this year, really. So think about your accounts when you see this. Think about, do I have everything set up exactly how I want it? And if you have any questions, reach, us, uh, reach out to us here and we would love to help you out. Thank you everyone for your questions. Please submit your questions as a comment through social media or directly to our email at VIP services at anchorstarwealth.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to get daily updates. That's all we have for today's show. I'm Allison Anchorstar and we'll see you back here tomorrow.